In this lecture, I will explain about the TCB-IP model. So the TCB-IP model is a four-layer model created by the U.S. Department of Defense. An actual implementation of this model is the TCB-IP protocol suite that is maintained by the Internet Engineering Task Force or IETF. The IETF maintains the standards of the protocols of this suite in what are called the request for comments or RFCs. The four layers of the TCB IB model correlate to layers of the OSI model as the following. And here we see that we have many protocols in each layer, but why is that model or suite was named as TCB IB? The answer is that because these are the most important two protocols in the suite. If you are into football or soccer, as it is called in the US, then it is like Barca comes to your mind if someone mentioned Messi, or Real Madrid if Cristiano Ronaldo was mentioned, when he was there, of course. Now, when data is passed from a layer to another, a protocol in this next layer should be specified, because as I have said, that there are many protocols in each layer. And typically, one protocol from each layer will be used, except in special cases, such as when using ICMB, OSPF, or EIGRB in conjunction with IB, where all of them are layer 3 protocols. The example that just comes into my mind is again from soccer. In this sport, there are four positions or rules. Goalkeeper, defenders, midfielders, and forwarders or strikers. In each position or line, except for the goalkeeper, there are multiple players. So this is an analogy for layers and protocols. At any given point of time, the ball will be with a player in specific line, who will pass it to another one in the next line. But he can pass it only to one player in the next line, not to all players of that line at the same time and that player should be selected wisely. So again, in networking, usually one protocol from each layer can be used at a time, and each protocol in one layer will pass data to another one in the next layer, based on the required functionality. So for example, after HTTP in the application layer, there will be TCP in the transport layer, because HTTP needs the reliability provided by TCB, as we will see shortly. The next one is IB, and then comes the Ethernet, ATM, or wireless. In case of DNS, for example, TCB or UDB can be used, depending on the operation required. Now, as the data will be received on the other side, and the opposite process will occur, there should be a mechanism of specifying which protocol in the layer will receive and process the message. That should be the same one used on the counterpart layer on the other side. Therefore, each protocol in the sender side will include a pointer about the above or next protocol, so that the receiver knows about that. For example, again when using HTTP, the TCP protocol will specify the port number as 80, which means HTTP. Then IB will specify the protocol number as 6, which means TCB. And finally, Ethernet will specify the protocol type number as 800 in hexadecimal, which means IB.